If the pandemic flu is coming, the most helpful thing would be just to know how to prepare for it. When dealing with disasters or catastrophic events of all types, it's impossible to overstate the importance of making a plan ahead of time. And the value of being well prepared is particularly important when faced with the numerous challenges presented by a severe or even moderate flu pandemic. You have um, businesses that will close. You have schools that will close. If the schools close, then people will not be able to come to work because they have to either stay home to take care of a sick loved one or um, they're sick themselves and they can't go to work. And of course, if they can't go to work, let's say they work at, at a public utility company. Um, then there's a risk of the disruption of power. The whole pattern of living and interaction changes completely when you have a pandemic because people who, per who perform vital functions may well be at home in bed and therefore don't expect things to operate as they usually do. Be prepared to, to be without a lot of things for up to two weeks or longer. Every individual, every community, Every family, every business, every school, everyone needs to have a plan in place to deal with the potential impact of a flu pandemic. And because there's so many unknowns about a flu pandemic, how long it will last, how many people it might impact, when and where it might begin, it's very important to have a plan in place to deal with a variety of possibilities. It will be of critical importance for you to know how and where to receive pandemic flu-related information. Equally important will be how to communicate with friends or loved ones from safe distances, such as by email, telephone, or chat rooms. Consider how school and work closures may affect your daily routine. Ask your employer how your workplace is planning to operate during a flu pandemic. Whether staggered shifts, telecommuting, and accessing remote networks will be considered. Gather information from your children's schools to find out what their flu pandemic response plans include. Plan for the likelihood that basic services such as water and electricity may be interrupted. Keep available some cash or traveler's checks in small denominations. Gathering needed supplies may help reduce your need for travel. It basically comes down to becoming as self-sustaining as possible. Additionally, there are other preparedness steps that would be of great value during a flu pandemic. If you haven't already done so, begin your plan by taking the following actions. Store two weeks worth of water for drinking, cooking, sanitation, and hygiene. At least one gallon of water per person per day. Use either bottled water or store your own water in plastic soda containers. Avoid using containers that will decompose or break, such as cardboard milk cartons or glass bottles. Store at least a two-week supply of food in your home for yourself, your family members, and your pets. Ensure that infant formula and other special nutritional needs are a part of your planning. Obtain and store supplies you might need to care for yourself or others. This includes first aid and medical supplies, such as thermometers, or household supplies, such as tissues and paper towels. This also includes prescription and over-the-counter medications. And prepare to care for individuals with flu symptoms and those with other chronic diseases or conditions who may be homebound due to the pandemic. Gather any items that may help you reduce the risk of spreading disease, such as household cleaning items, disinfectants such as bleach, bar or liquid hand soaps, alcohol-based hand sanitizers with 60 to 95% alcohol, masks, and disposable gloves. Gathering two weeks' worth of supplies may seem like a lot because it is more than you need to keep in your kit for other disasters. The reason for this is that during a pandemic, it may be safer to stay at home for long periods of time, and stores may be closed or out of stock.